Whoa, that's not good. He's looking for a rat. Crazy. Coolest build yet. <laughs> He's being made. Wow. <laughs> you got it made up here. Hello, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot you're deaf. My man. Let's cut this thing up. Whoop boom. Peg leg. Good enough for who it's for. Clean your rear end over here. That's unfortunate. Oh, what heck car? <laughs> wow. I heard that. Oh, gosh. Artiste on it. Okay, 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 okay. Lord almighty. Who? Huh? To the hospital this morning. Worse than they thought. Genius. It's a record. Yeah. Darn, son. Woo! You doggy. Woo! <laughs> 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 it broke already. It knows focus. Gase it. Oh, gosh. Good job. What are you doing? Right in the face. It's impeccable. Ah! Wired that up, bro. Just these girls. <laughs> He'd be fine, right? We're Hope for the best. Lemon squeezy. Oh, wow. <laughs> back up, Terry. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sleeper Dude channel. If you've watched our other videos, you know that we are trying our best to get this car ready for Cleus and Cars Bristol which as of right now is eight days away. We have this methanol burning high compression roller cam 360 that we pulled out of that motorhome right there. And we are gonna try to fit that in our 78 Gremlin here. We did a $44 paint job on it to try to make it look like Grim from Cars 2. I think it turned out pretty good. We also got the 727 transmission out of this motorhome. I'm not sure if it's gonna fit or not. I can't wait to see it in there with the crazy intake setup we got for this thing. Let's get right to it and see if we can sit this thing over into it. Man, those headers make a nice handle, don't they? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's easier just to roll the car than it is to roll the engine. Man, I've been waiting to see this. We've been waiting to get this engine built now for over three months, so mm -hmm. it's been a long way to get this point. We don't know if this oil pan's gonna fit or not. This is actually a 99 Dodge Durango oil pan. I'm hoping I don't have to modify it to make this fit. These 727s have such a long snuffle up against on the end of them. <laughs> Crazy. Hopefully Wawa will be here in a minute to help me. Shoot, I should have had headers like this on every one of them. <laughs> it makes it something to hold on to. I'm gonna have to put it straight on its nose with that tail shaft so long. It seems to have a pretty wide transmission tunnel. I'm hoping that helps us out. Wish this had a removable up the top arm, but it doesn't. Come on back. Give me a Over here. I don't think that big starter we have would fit. So far, so good on the pan. Trying to take the back of this transmission. Well, that was quick and easy, wasn't it? Yeah. Which we're not gonna let sit that low. It's literally sitting on the pan there. Looks like we got room back here. And the headers seem like they got room. Yeah, I was a little worried about the headers. I'm stopping from going back. We need room for a radiator. That transmission seems to be sitting there nicely. It's like flush with the bottom of the frame rail right now. All right, let me look at that pan. There's your shot of that. It definitely looks like the pan is gonna work out nicely. What we're gonna have to do now is pull this back out real quick and put the pickup table on the oil pump and install the oil pan for good. Cause I don't think we'll have to do any modifications to that. And you can see how nice the transmission's fitting under here, which the transmission will sit lower than that cause it's pretty high in the tunnel right now. Let me look on the other side of the shift linkage and the trans lines. We may have to dimple the firewall a little bit for the shift linkage possibly, but everything else looks completely fine under here to me. That's good news that we don't have to modify the pan. I was worried I might even have to buy a pan. Right. I don't know what would fit. I'm gonna have to make my own motor and transmission mounts. We gotta figure out about a drive shaft once we get that done. I have to plumb the whole thing, wire the whole thing, do the whole cooling system. We got a lot to do in eight days. Yeah. I was cleaning up this oil pump pickup tube and look at all the junk in there. Oh. <gasps> wow pieces of gasket and it looked clean but all that was stuck way back in here whoa 
That's probably part of the reason why this engine lost oil pressure. Yeah. That thing's full. Wow. Have you ever seen one like I've that? never seen one that stopped up. I mean, I've seen junk on the pickup tube before. Never like that. Yeah, that definitely could have had something to do with why this engine was losing oil pressure. Put a little Loctite on the threads. Kind of scares me that this thing might back off, you know? That wouldn't be good. That would be unfortunate. You gotta make sure you get this bushing over here in the right spot before you crank it down or you'll bust it. Is that the proper torque spec, honey? Exact torque. Mm -hmm. Now this has got to come around and be level on where the pan's gonna sit. Right there looks pretty good to me. Let me get straight edge on it. Well, we're eight and several eights on both sides. So that should be dead oil in there. I'm also going to measure our depth here. You need to know your depth sometimes. Nine inches. Well, that's unfortunate. That's only about eight and a half inches deep. I know why this is. And I know where the part is that we swapped out. So we use the old pan on that Magnum. We use the old pan with the new pickup tube. So this is the pickup tube for the 74 model with a pan for the 99. So can we beat the bottom out of that pan? I don't think so. We honey. can't beat a half inch out? I don't think our pickup's gonna work at all. Yeah, that's not gonna work at all. Look where the pickup is versus the sump. Oh, yeah. Our pickup is way too far forward. What are we gonna do? I think this one came in contact with something mm -hmm. on that van and we had to use the old pan. We've got to get a 99 Dodge Durango oil pump pickup tube. Like Today. Now. That's not good. Uh, I better take this off before that lock type sets up. Oh my gosh, I forgot about it. Okay, awesome. Yes, I need it. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it. O'Reilly's can get one by four o'clock today. So that makes me feel better. <laughs> I guess we're just gonna have to keep working, slap it back on there the way it was, and start building mounts and stuff because we can't wait on it. It's probably gonna be in there a couple times. Mama don't never like that stuff. No, I like this. Final she install. wants to final everything. I'm like, you can't really do it that way. You kind of have to mop things up. You can do. So I got a 3-4 frostbite radiator for it. I want to keep it cool. I'm trying to figure out how much room it's going to need. I'm honestly not sure what kind of fan I'm going to run yet. Now, if I cut this, we can move this thing forward quite a bit. These little ears here are in the way. come pretty far forward depending on what fan we decide to run that's going to fit in there nicely though i kind of want to bring it forward and up which is the opposite of what i normally do i really want to mount it where it really looks ridiculous in there really the angle coming off the transmission engine and the angle of the rear axle need to be parallel with each other like within a half a degree this actually has a degree and a half of downward angle we're probably going to have to adjust the pinion angle in the back in order to get it real similar to the way the engine is but man it'd be easy to work on some of the stuff when it's sitting up that high and i think it'd look cool this is the factory motor mounts here we got to go from here over to the frame and we're just going to solid mount this thing did you come to visit me buddy Oh, he's on the case. He's looking for a rat. So I went upstairs and pulled out just some random pieces of metal that we might be able to use. Some different size plate steel here. I wish I had more of something like that, but I really don't have enough of that. I'm gonna monkey around with this here and cut some stuff and see what we can figure out. This really amazes me that the stock cross member looks like it's gonna work out. I just gotta, you know, obviously adapt it to this transmission, but I fully expected to have to make a completely custom one. Well, it's it's sitting down in there. It's not mounted. That's crazy. We're gonna get this done. We're gonna get this done. Nine days. We're gonna get done. You're just like your mama. <laughs> you see that the engine in and out is so much closer, but really, work's only begin here. Oh, it'll be fine. That's crazy, Dad. Excellent job. Thanks. It's not even mounted. But I'm getting it sorted out. I've been working on it for a little while here. I made these mount tabs for the front of the block. And I got to make some sort of post over to the frame rail. Working on that now. I don't think it's going to be too terrible to mount. The only thing I'm worried about is our driveline angles. Trying to get all that right.
We're not doing this very scientific. I'm just kind of looking at and seeing what looks right for me. We can't go back any farther without hitting the firewall. It actually has an indention right there for the distributor, so I think we'll be good there, it looks like. I really can't go any higher than this because the trans tunnel is gonna hit. So front to back, I think we're good. Side to side. Let me measure that real quick. Yeah, we're good. And the height measurement is the only one I'm kind of questioning. Like, is that too high? Is it gonna throw us off on our drive line angles too much? I could go a little bit higher with the transmission in the back, but not much. I'll say screw it to it and let's go. Think I should mount it up that high? I yeah. know Ralphie does, he told me. Okay, let's do it to it. Do it to it and let's be done. Oh, you got it in the middle? Sure. <laughs> hey, that's what's going to have a glove and glove and glove. Well, there you go. That's what I figured out for this side. I don't have it finished welded, but when we pull the engine back out, I'll finish weld all that. Now I just got to make one over here, which is going to have to be at a more extreme angle because we can't go down there. We're going to have to go across to here on top. Well, here's our driver's side one. As you can see, I welded a plate to the frame rail instead of welding straight to it. And these plates mm -hmm. under here, I guess that's gonna be what it is, huh? Ralphie's gonna be so excited when he gets home. He is gonna be so excited. Well, I guess I'm gonna let the weight off of it and see what it does. Ow. It squatted a little bit, didn't it? Yeah. We need to go ahead and test fit the distributor in the intake to make the original fit. I did level it, at least. We've never really built anything like this. No, we it's We've crazy. Built, I've always built the opposite of this. That's why the channel is sleeper dude. Mm, this we is... always had cars that look like that, that were fast. And this oh. is not sleeper. Okay, so we have room for our distributor. That's good news. And we should have room for our intake. I forgot we had the intake. Oh. <laughs> Looks so good. It's so... Ridiculous. Ridiculous. So cool. Oh my gosh. This is the coolest build yet. Yeah, for real. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Now I gotta make a transmission cross member, and then we gotta figure out our drive shaft because if we have to have one made, we need to know it now. Yeah, that is like the perfect recess for it right there. Great. Made for it, son. Great. Made for it. It's gonna be super loud. It's going to be the loudest thing we've ever had. Is it going crazy loud? With 13 to 1 compression and how big that cam is, it's going to be really loud. Awesome. I think we're going to roll this thing up on the lift to do our transmission cross member because we got one here. We might as well use it. It'll be a lot easier on that transmission cross member. I just love how it's turning out. Man, it looks good. Look how much that sticks up. <laughs> huh, that's tough. Yeah. This is the first time we put anything on this lift. See, our transmission, I think, is really close to where it needs to be. It probably should come up just a little bit to try to help our driveline angle. Not too bad. Seem to have room for everything. Should be easy to get the starter off. All of our trans lines should be pretty easy. I should just go ahead and take that bracket off because it looks like it may be in the way of taking the oil filter off. We got ample room here. We probably could have went down about three inches if we wanted to. We can go quite ways up and still not hurt anything. We're still not touching the firewall up there with our case. What do you think, Wall? I think about there, honestly. Pretty centered up. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I had to end up buying a brand new yoke because we use the old yoke on our motorhome drive shaft. Shouldn't take all that engagement. We don't want to bind it up. So what if we went out there? What is our center to center measure? Man, it is going to be short. 37 inches is all that drive shaft's going to be. We're missing our little straps here. We need to go look at those nine inch chunks we have. Maybe one of them has the same strap, huh? Probably. So I have four or five four nine inch center sections. None of them have the straps for the U joint. That's great. I'm going to have to get some. Walkie. You got any drive shafts out here about 37 inches long? A lot of help he is. Look at them ears. I don't got no bottle. Don't even come over here. I ain't got one. What about you, Flower? You know about any drive shafts out here? Rocky wasn't no help at all. Not looking too promising. There may be one up in the top of the barn, though. Maybe one of these will work. 
Well, we found three drive shaft possibilities. Rocky had out here and a fan. Awesome. Really was helpful on this one. Granny, too. Look, look at her. She just pushes Look, and she goes right to my flowers. <laughs> hey, what'd it do to you, bro? He's being mean to my thing. So this is all the drive shafts I have on the property. This is the stock one that came with the Gremlin. The problem with it is you can see the size changes once you get this far back. I would have to cut it farther than that and this right here wouldn't fit in there. So all three of these are completely straight, which is a good thing. Problem is they're all 40 something inches long. So this one I think is the shortest, but honestly it don't really matter because if you're gonna have to cut one, it don't matter if you cut 10 inches or three feet out of it. You know, it's all the same. So I'm really thinking about using the one in the middle because it looks like the thickest one. Probably a good idea. I have no idea what that came out of. Another problem is gonna be the U-joint size on this because it's for a 727 is a big boy U-joint. It's a little bit bigger than these. So we're gonna have to get a adapter U-joint. I'll use that word instead of the actual word. Try to make it work that way. So we're gonna have to measure and figure out which size U-joints we need. We need to cut that drive shaft down. Oh, that's going to be magic right there. So this is the center section I cut out of the motorhome cross member that I kept, of course. And I'm going to weld it straight to that. And it lines up perfectly. I'm going to grind some of this goop off here. And then we're just going to weld that straight to that. And I'll probably take it back off and cut these ears off as well. Ralphie just got home from school and he hasn't got to see it yet. Wow. <laughs> I knew it. I saw the engine voice and I was... You're like, oh, you knew it. Do you approve those engine mounts? Oh, you have it mounted. Oh. I have the engine mounted. Golf, Golf clap. Wow. That's, That's when you know. Definitely. I'm working on the transmission mount right now. You got her done today. I've been working since early this morning while you were, whatever, studying the moon landings or whatever. I was doing this. <laughs> moon landings. <laughs> One to ten? Eleven. Exactly. It's turned out better than I thought it would. I have finally found the wash mess under here. Was there still? Ah! There's still two. Yeah. Wait, he's got new canvases. Wallace's gonna get this uh, bumper polished up, cleaned up a little bit. So we can stick her back on the car. We may need the rear bumper. You gonna need every bit of it. Probably. Oh yeah, she's coming up. Woo! This weekend, September 29th and 30th, we will be at Holly Intergalactic Ford Fest in Bowling Green, Kentucky at Beach Bend Park. Come check us out. We'll be doing meet and greet. We'll be there with our cars as well competing. It's going to be an awesome weekend. It's one of our favorite places to go. Hope we'll see you there. <laughs> hey, Dad. What? There's something like burning. Yeah. Probably not the best table to do this on. Yeah. Oh, it's on fire. Okay. Yep. Oh, that's on fire. That's a lot faster than cutting out with a cop, Will. Don't zoom on me. Come on. Come on, Give what? Face. I ain't gonna make no faces. Woo! <laughs> Woo, that's hot. Golly! Burnt my hand. There you go. Engine and transmission mounts are kind of in now. That looks pretty good to you, Ralph. Yeah, we had to step up our game and get a little comment on the job. Ellie, you ain't working. No, she ain't doing nothing. You guys got this. That's all right. So my reason for using this instead of just solid mounting it is my starlet early on, I had the transmission mount solid and I busted a transmission case, which I switched to rubber and it busted it again. So it may have been a horsepower thing, but a lot of what you read says solid engine mounts, rubber transmission mount, because that way the chassis flexes and it'll snap your transmission case. I'm just wanting to help the transmission out as much as I can. Squeeze is working on her paintings up here. Looking it, good. It will look better. I just have to add the details to it. You got your air conditioning mister going? Yep. You got it made up here. It says, going to need one of these. I think one of the guys I used to work with at the body shop wrote that on this. Maybe Tom, I don't remember. I think this was out of my LTD wagon now, but I see that. I wanna make sure we can actually use it. I'd hate to cut it down and then realize something was wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock these U-joints out of it. Man, those are really rusted in there. This one was in the exhaust pile. There you go. 
we're just using two different sockets here. One that's bigger than the usual cap and one that's smaller. We're gonna try to push it all out. That was easy. Well, hello, sir. Oh, gosh. <laughs> he hasn't been in this room, has he? No. no. Is there stuff for him to eat in here? Dad left some stuff over there, Rocky. You can go through that. Oh, Bad Daddy Brady will be upset if you mess up his notebooks. Where's Granny? Did you just leave her by herself? Poor Granny. Don't you love working with a goat back in your face? Oh, yeah. I'm used to it now. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Rocky. You gotta do your taxes when you don't have your seat. What happened to it? Oh, the goat ate it. Rocky, it's not time for fan mail. Leave the packages alone. Oh, did you jump? I came right now. He's not. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> He's not face. He's not face. He wants a scratch. Unfortunately, this one clip here broke on both ends. So I guess I'm gonna have to break it and chisel it out of there somehow. Hey, there we go. So I'm trying to find out if they make a U-joint, we can adapt that yoke to this and adapt it to the Ford one as well. I come down here to get something and here's Granny. What are you doing down here, girl? Oh, I forgot you're deaf. Well, we're gonna go ahead and go to town because I wanna make sure I can get these U-joints and it's been long enough now that our oil pump pickup team is supposed to come in. I'm also gonna get a one-piece oil pan gasket just so I have a really good one. We need those U-joint straps for the back of the rear end. I'm really hoping to have something like that too. This guy's out here doing it for Dale. I'll tell you what, I'm so proud of him. My man. All right, I got a bunch of stuff we need. Let's get home. Before I start cutting down this drive shaft, I want to show you what I had to do here. There's a couple different sizes of U-joints. There's like a 1310 and a 1330 and a 1350. This is a standard 1310 U-joint. That's what that drive shaft takes, but because this yoke right here is a 1350 style U-joint, you can see that the cap size is too small and it's too narrow to fit in that. So I had to get a conversion U-joint. There's another word for it, but it sounds really bad. And if you look, you can probably tell the difference. So this is the 1310 side. This is the 1350 side. So what that'll allow me to do is take this 1350 style joint on this yoke and convert it to the 1310 style that's on this drive shaft. So if you got something like this, it's not the end of the world. There's charts online showing the different cap sizes and widths and everything. And usually you can get some sort of conversion U-joint to fix it. So let's cut this thing up. And I also was able to find these straps on the help aisle. So that surprised me. So we're gonna have to cut a whole foot off this drive shaft because it's 49 and we need it to be 37-ish. First thing you wanna do is have it firmly installed in your shopping cart. Then you wanna take a belt sander or grinder or whatever. And I'm gonna grind through all this weld right here, trying to get through this layer and through that weld so this will slide out. I'm taking note that the U-joints are lined up with each other, so we'll put them back that way. And there you go, pops right off. Here's your close up of what it looks like. So I'll grind this down to the diameter it used to be. And I'll cut 12 inches off that. We'll slide it down this way and weld it back on. I end up having to take the propane torch and heat the tube up to get it to go back in there. But I think it's ready to weld now. It's all measuring out good. Let's weld this thing. Ooh, watch out, Piggy. There you go, got it welded on there. Just gotta press the U-joints in. Man, it's short now, isn't it? I can't remember how long the one was in my Starlet, but I don't know if it was shorter than this or not. I think it may have been a little bit shorter, but it was 30 something. Me and Ralphie cut it in half. Ralphie still talks about it to this day. Well, after hours of work, I got it cut down. I got the new U-joints in it, and I have not test fit it. <laughs> Please be right. That would be unfortunate, wouldn't it? 
That would be unfortunate. Oh, I must have guessed right. <laughs> oh, me. You're such a smarty. That was a lot of work, I'll tell you, if you want to do it. It's not super quick to do. It'll save you some money, and it might shake your teeth out. We'll find out at the end of this. I, she ain't got to drive far now. She just got to go in circles. That's right. One thing I forgot to say earlier is I kind of hit the lottery on this one. I cut that off and look, it's a layer of rubber and then a thick layer on the inside of it. And I cut it off within like a half of an inch of the end. So I was able to just knock this out. If I had cut off in the middle of this, man, I don't know how they ever got it out, but that's what they told me when I took the motor home and got the drive shaft cut down was that it was that way. I guess that's to absorb some sort of vibration or something. That thing's heavy, feel it. You kill somebody for that. Exactly. Oh, oh. What? Wumpum. Wumpum. So big day today. We got our engine mounted, our transmission mounted, and our drive shaft made, which is the three really big things. You did great. I need to do. I've worked like uh, 15, 16 hours today on this. Bless it. Just been nonstop. And it's a heat wave. There really wasn't a lot everybody else could do today because a lot of it was super technical. Like, right. It's not like I can just put them loose on this, you know? Well, that's gonna be it today guys i'm beat it is pitch black dark outside super late i guess i'll see you guys bright and early in the morning and i'll get back on this thing guys you have asked for it and it is here we have a new shirt design for you guys we got our new sleeper dude casing shirt how cool is this now we had a little help we had a fan from australia anthony pasco send us some of this design we tweaked it a little bit and put it on a shirt it says sleeper dude casings we ain't got no new ones around here we just got used ones you know the maypop kind they come with an out of sight warranty as soon as you're out of sight warranty's over okay what else you got you might ask we've got the new impeccable sticker hit them with it wah Woo. look wah wah's beetle impeccable sticker you asked for it you got it so that's our new stuff right now we're trying our best to do new things on the website. It's very hard for us because we're very busy. We also just got in an order of some new shirts. So if you try to buy something recently and it was sold out, you can go find it now at thesleeperdude.com. We're discontinuing the casing killer shirts. We have a few left. So if you really love them and you hadn't got one yet, you might as well buy them because we're not going to have any more of them. Thanks for all your support. Now let's get back to the video. All right, well, it's the next morning. I'm very tired, but we're going to continue working on this thing because now it's seven days until the event. I'm gonna check my rear end because nobody's gonna check it for me. This is a Ford 8 inch rear end. According to the tag, it's got a 300 gear, so it ought to have plenty of wheel speed. Somebody's already took the brakes off, so that's a step I don't have to do. We gotta lock this thing together though, because we don't wanna go out there with a peg leg and get embarrassed. I also need to adjust my drive line angle. I think it's down two degrees, and it really needs to be up five, so we got about seven degrees we gotta change on this rear axle, so let's get to it. Lots of cars are four lug, lots of them. A lot of people will tell you that a Ford eight inch is not strong enough to do what we're trying to do here. But I happen to have some experience with these rear axles. My Maverick, which was a big block turbo car, had the same exact rear axle. And I went 660s in the eighth mile at 106 in a 3,300 pound car with this axle. So I have all the confidence in the world. They have the exact same spline count as a normal nine inch Ford does, 28 spline. They're very similar to a 9 inch Ford. So you got four studs behind here. That's what that hole is to access them. Take these nuts off here, and then we can pull the axle out. See how that one's going the opposite of this one? Mm -hmm. So that's an open differential. That's what they do when you spin them, which seems odd, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. A lot of times you can take the brake drum and take this off. We don't have a brake drum to take this off, so. I got a slide hammer, I'm gonna grab it. One day I was pulling on a cart work and I had it right there. Came back and took a chunk out of my leg. I still have a scar to this day. Oh. There you go. There you go, there's your splines. Short, isn't it? I wonder what this rear end came out of. I'd love to know. Well, look at that. The Lord answered our prayers. It's out of 77 Maverick. That is so funny. Somebody's rode on it. So this is exactly the same rear axle that I ran in my so Maverick. So you're already loving her more. I know. I'm glad somebody already put this in here because if it would have been the stock one, you know, I don't know what size the stock axle is, but I'm sure it's not as beefy as an eight inch Ford. Especially since this was a four cylinder car from the factory. You actually don't have to take these all the way out. You can actually just pull them back enough to get the center section out. I just wanted to look at the axles, make sure nothing was broke. 
see it says 3.00 so if it said 3l00 then it would be a posi if this was like a 4l11 it'd be a 411 gear posi so you can learn a lot off those tags let's see what this fluid looks like glued in there isn't it there you go I got my gloves on, I'm good. <laughs> ah, you thought you had me. I had you. Get with it, Mal. It's stuck, isn't it? They flex seal this thing on or something? I've been beating on this for like 20 minutes now trying to get it apart. I didn't want it to come to this, but I don't want to break this thing. There you go. I've literally been working on that for like 45 minutes. Trying to get this thing to come loose. Craziness. I don't know why it's glued on there. But at least it does have fluid in it. It's always a good sign. I just don't want to mess up the gasket surface like that, you know? You left me no option. Isn't this your favorite smell? Ah, uh, it smells worse. I hate it. It does smell pretty bad. And then transmission fluid's my next one. <laughs> oh, man, these are not light. Golly, that's tough. Got a little surface rust on the gears right there. I'm not seeing any broke teeth though. So far so good. So what we're gonna put in here is a mini spool. And this is about the cheapest way to lock up your rear axle if you're wanting to do drag racing or burnouts. I've drove with them on the street plenty. People will tell you you can't drive them on the street, but there's no telling how many thousands of miles I drove with these. You just gotta be careful in the rain and stuff. But this goes inside there. This will fit a nine inch or an eight inch and it's 28 spline and it locks all this together. So the way you set the backlash on these is it has these screw-in caps. So there's no shim packs you have to get or anything. All you gotta do is screw these in to get the right preload, the right backlash. Right now you can see there's just barely any backlash to it. There's the correct way to do it, and then there's the way I've always done it. I just try to get it where the smallest amount of backlash possible. Never had any trouble yet. That mini spool is only like 20 something bucks. I went 590s in the eighth mile with my Starlet with one of them. I've never broke one. This is just like an engine. You want to keep up where these caps went. They're machined to fit just one side. So you got a bearing race there and a threaded collar. So far everything looks fine with our bearings. I want to verify the gear ratio just in case somebody changed it. So we have 39 teeth on our ring gear and we have 13 teeth on our pinion. So that puts us right at 300 gear. So I would think that would be a good gear ratio for doing burnouts because you want the wheel speed. So this is why an eight inch is called an eight inch. It's eight inches across the ring gear. So a nine inch is, wait for it, nine inches. That's our ring gear. Get it out of the way. Now we gotta separate this. So there's our two halves and there's our spider gears inside. We are literally going to just take these out and toss them because they don't serve a purpose anymore. Only thing we're going to keep out of these guts is this cross pin right here. All right, you hit, okay? Oh, oh. You better keep it still. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Keep it still. I am. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. You got it. Oh Lord, my life flashed before my eyes. There's our other spotter gear. That one, I should be able to pull this guts out of here. There you go. That's what it looks like when it's completely gutted out. And this guy is gonna sit right down in there. That just takes the place of all your spider gears and locks both sides together. Now, we just put it all back together the same way it came apart. Set our backlash and then it'll be done. I'm sure they make a tool for this, which probably is a lot better than what I'm using here, but this is the way I've always done it. Just put two punches in there with a flat screwdriver. Redneck ingenuity at its finest right here. Okay, See, that's too much backlash for me. The right way to do it is to set up a dial indicator on here and rock it back and forth. I don't remember what the exact tolerance is. I feel like it's like eight thousandths. So I'm gonna loosen this up and bring it closer to the pinion and that should tighten this up some. Tiniest little bit of backlash now. Nothing seems to be binding. Good enough for who it's for. Got my gasket surface cleaned up, even filed down where I beat it up with the chisel, trying to get it off. You clean your rear end over here? I'm trying to, but it's nasty. <laughs> your rear end's nasty? <laughs> I keep scraping down here and it comes out on me. Yeah, usually you gotta reach in there and push that gear oil out because it 
we'll just keep doing that. Ooh, nasty. That's what happens. It stays on the other side of the lip and then weeps out on you. Any chunkies? No. I guess now I'm going to tackle our drive line angle, cut these pads off, and re weld them. You didn't know I was that strong, did you? I'm telling you what, surprising me today. I'm gonna see if I can cut these pads off and reuse them. I'm not sure if I can cut them that clean or not. I mean, I'm not Donald Franklin or nothing. Still hide behind me. I think I blew a hole in it over here. You did. That's unfortunate. I just thought it stunk before, golly. <laughs> Smoking pumpkin here. Since I blew a hole in it, I'm gonna have to rinse this thing out. Make sure we don't have any metal pieces in there that's floating around. Oh yeah, I done it to it, didn't I? Yeah, you did. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and weld these up. I think we're about ready to sit back in there and weld our pads on. This just took longer than expected. I might can reuse these, but as you can tell, I cut them all the way down to nothing. So I end up going to Tractor Supply and getting these right here. These are made for a trailer. They should work fine. They're for a three inch axle tube. It'll probably make for a better weld as well, since it's brand new metal. Somewhere, how about like that? We're gonna make sure we got it centered up in the car. We're gonna roll this up this way a little bit because of our funky angle on our engine. How about the stairs today? You need to move that thing over a little bit to the right, straight that thing up. Level on the measuring tape says you're wrong. So inaccurate. I can see I'm eyeballing it right now. I know you're, you're eyeballing it right now, but that don't mean it's straight. Tell me, come here and look at it. The center section is not in the center of the rear axle. That's what you're saying. Oh, well, heck far. One axle is usually always longer than the other. Oh. I just stuck the axles in there. I'm gonna set it down and check our angles before I weld this thing. Well, it looks like we're centered and at the right angle, so I'm gonna weld her in. Wow, that is so heavy. Oh man, that is a booger. Well, there you go. Now they both spin. Locked in for good now. Well, that was something we had to do. Took a long time today to do that. I measured everything. This is at six degrees. This is at six degrees up. This is at three degrees up because of the height difference between the yoke and the other yoke. Basically, that means I have a three degree pinion angle. I would think with three degrees, we shouldn't have shaking issues, aside from the fact that I cut down a drive shaft and never had it balanced. Well, that's a big step out of the way. Golly, that looks good. <laughs> I laugh every time I see it. You come back to see me, Granny? We keep wondering how long she's gonna live. She was old when somebody gave her to us for free, so we have no idea how old she is. Thanks for your help. Well, now that I have my push rods, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and throw them in the engine. And we might as well go ahead and pull this thing out because we gotta put our oil pump, our new pickup tube and oil pan on. I guess I'm gonna strip the top off this engine and we'll go ahead and pull this stuff back out. <laughs> So our push rod link, that's Mike. What is he doing? So our push rod length ended up being 7.2 inches. And these are comp cams, Magnum, 5 16 chromoly push rods. So I'm putting some assembly lube on them, drop them down in there, and then we'll adjust these rockers real quick and we'll have a functioning engine. Here comes Mike now. I thought you were out of town. You just missed it. I had the intake on it and headers and everything. Love it. You like the paint scheme? That's Kubota orange, man. Is it really? Yeah, Kubota orange. Sweet. Yeah, $44 worth of paint on this bad boy. Look out. Look at that monster. I know, right? There's the intake. 
Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's serious, isn't it? That's some stuff. <laughs> Dang. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much been everybody's response to my intake selection there. Yeah, put your whole fist through that oh thing. Oh my gosh. This is the headers that go oh on. Oh my god, that is sick. <laughs> And it's almost as high as the roof. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is crazy. I thought you'd like oh, it. I love that. That is awesome. What are you doing? Hey, baby. So. Let me know what it is. And, uh... What are you doing today? Hey, bud. Look, I worked on the car. Can you tell? What? Does it look less worked on rather than more worked on? Yeah. Got the push rods yeah. today, yes. Yeah. But I work most of the time on the rear axle. Why don't you go give that a check out? Booty It looks the same as it was. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Let's see what happens. She's gonna go like me. <laughs> nope, no. <laughs> Not today, Satan. <laughs> I'm gonna put these on there and you're gonna hold it, okay? And don't stretch up the tape. There you go. I'll put on crisscross. Ain't nobody need four. <laughs> Righty tighty, lefty loopy. I know that, mother. You know that? Yeah. Since when? So here's how you do it on adjusting these. When the exhaust just starts to open, so we're gonna watch down here on this lifter. Right there, see it start coming up? That is when you can adjust your intake. So what we wanna do is take all the up and down slop out of this. It's really easy to push this piston down this lifter, so it's not a lot of force at all. You basically take all the slop out of the system, like that, right there, and then you go a turn and a half more. So one and a half, and then you lock it down like this right here. The bumper's tight. Thank you, Ralphie. So that's locked down. Now we're gonna go over and adjust our exhaust side. So this time, watch our intake lifter. Opens the valve, comes back down. It's almost all the way back down. You stop, and then you can adjust the exhaust side. And it's the same way. And then we go a turn and a half of preload. And that preloads your lifter, so it's at the right adjustment. And once it fills up with oil, it'll push that up a little tighter there, and it should work out just fine. Right, squeeze? Yeah. I oh, we got a reveal? Okay. Oh, we got a reveal. Whee! Whoa, wow! Gosh, what are you doing? That looks beautiful. Wow. It's even late. You've been paying Good attention, job. haven't you? You been watching that PBS? <laughs> we don't even have cable. What are you oh, talking right. about? Sorry. What are you working on, Wall? I'm trying to get my nails off so I can work. Uh, Sacrifices have to be made, okay? We ain't got time to go get no nails done. We didn't rock her. Okay, that's the last one. They're locked down. We should have compression now. How we know we got compression? Put her finger in the thing? Yes. All right, who wants to put their finger in the hole? I shall. You like sucked it in. <laughs> Don't lose your finger. So here we go. Intake. Next part should be compression. Woo! 13 to 1. Seven. I heard that. Woo! Here you go. Okay, we have compression, so it's doing all the right things. Good deal. I guess it's time to pull this engine now. Oh my god, I hate doing that. This is part of it. Wow. We have no oil pan gasket, no oil pump, no oil pump pickup tube. Can't you do that from the bottom? I tried that while I was up on the lift. Mm. What size is it? It's a 916th. When you're making mounts and stuff, you just gotta pull stuff in and out. I've gotta weld those motor mounts better too. How much do I tighten this up? All the way. Well, at least we got mine to pull. Well, that's a big deal, you know. I thought he was out of town. He was out of town. He's probably supposed to be working. He's probably clocked in right now. <laughs> you putting the marker lights on? Yeah. What's the deal? Squeeze, I might need you to paint these motor mounts for me. Uh, I'm gonna take a transmission cost number down. I thought we could bump it over if you didn't want to. Is it too high? No. Tie yeah. the handle up and start going up with it. All right, that's good. What are you doing? I got a thumb on my foot. You got a splinter in your Grinch feet? Yeah. I'm gonna get in there and weld that while it's out. I weld it everywhere I could, but you can't get to everything, you know? You're hitting that. That's right. Yeah, put her on her nose. What was that mess? You can pull it out now. Hold on. Well, 
there's the difference in the oil pump pickup tubes. You can see the position it puts it in much farther back than what it was and off to the side. Look at the difference in the screen too. It's working. There's so many donkey parts on this. It's a hoblet. You ain't lying, cuz. Sorry, you at Zoom. Oh no. Oh gosh, Jaws. He's like Jaws from Double Seven to me. <laughs> Should be right about there, Ralph. That's eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter, we're good there. I hope this one don't get knocked off. <laughs> Too soon, son. <laughs> you gotta get down with them nails. We ain't got all yeah. night. We ain't got time for that. We need You can get your nails, nails after Bristol. You got your sign? I think so. I upgrade to a one piece oil paint gasket. Seal this thing up really good. Oh, I you're painting me. Well, you better get your fingers out. I <laughs> you got it? You gotta do now. Okay, good. Is your spa day over now? Can we get the back on the car? We got another one done tonight? Yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. That's good, too. The little palm trees I added. I wish I could get the car done so we can paint. I know. Very good, Swizzle. Get a clean wall. Time. Get low, girl. Come on now. We got the artiste on it. Oh, Squeezy's pulling her way right here now. That might be some of my best work. I actually bought some break in oil, if you can believe it. I usually buy like a bottle of additive, and when I was on Summit's website, this stuff for like 12 quarts was about the price of normal oil, so I bought it. Give it the best chance of living, you know? Come on. Woo! <laughs> Pull your legs up. Okay. There you go. Oh, on oh, my leg. Thank you, Squeeze. You did a great job. Looks good. My paintbrush. <laughs> Put it in this car. You got this. Whoa! Let me lay it down a little bit. Let me crunk her up. This is a final install. That's the plan, at least. Praise Woo! the good Lord. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Guys, Ralphie is not feeling good. You Poor know how Lola was sick last week? Mm. Ralphie's not feeling good now, so she was the germ. It was not my fault. Now, poor, innocent little Ralphie. They don't feel good. Don't feel good. If he's not in here most when you're dropping the engine in, you know he's not feeling good. I think you're good. Just drop it. We're putting it on this car. Trying. There we go. There right, we go. Now put the nuts on there. Yep. <laughs> time time today. There we go. Oh, it's cross threaded. No, just keep going. It'll be fine. Let it be known. I've taken three out in the time it took her to do one. Shut up. We didn't know it was a race. Everything's a race. I won. I'm gonna put some oil on these rockers so they don't dry start. She thick. Wawa's gonna put our spark plugs in. I got some NGKs. I usually like running that brand. Had pretty good luck at them. I crossed through everything, I swear. I'm gonna go ahead and pour some more of this brake in oil on the engine. I like pouring it over the lifters and camshaft here and just to help lubricate everything. We're gonna pre lube it here in just a minute though. I figure this is not gonna be too easy to get to once the tunnel ram is on here. Lord almighty, you're globbing it on there. Well, we're not putting the Good. gasket on there. That's the fattest caterpillar I've ever seen. We don't want it to leak. We even have enough. Not the right he's going. Engine builder one and two over here. <laughs> Tell me how to do it. Okay, we can't well, move the gasket that? around. You putting her down? Slowly. What's that look like on your side, Marge? I don't know. Dead on. Goated. Three zoom. Dead. Huh? <laughs> Looks like she's in the grocery store pushing her buggy. Cool. Very good. You have paint everywhere. Yeah, I know. 
Hopefully all the bolt holes lined up. We never tried to put all the bolts in. Ralphie's trying to figure out a spark plug wire situation. We got some new MSD plug wires here that should fit our stock distributor cap. The reason the factory Mopar distributor. I'm putting duct tape on these holes so water doesn't get through and ruin everything. So you don't want to ruin our interior. What are you we want to doing? File this out so this in there because it doesn't because we had bond on it. Mm. Yeah. So we got our headers on, we got our plug wires on, valve covers, intake, carbs, everything on. Well, it's baby bedtime. They got skewed tomorrow, so. Daddy's gonna keep working. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, you. Take a shower. A shower would be nice right now. I guess now I'm gonna start on the fuel system. So the basis of our fuel system is, we have this Holly VR1 pump, which is a brushless pump. And I think this bad boy can do like 3000 horsepower. You can actually control the speed of it. So you can slow it down if you don't need all that pump. I think you can wire this thing where it just runs 50% all the time, which is probably what we'll do. The reason why we went with a pump this big is because on methanol, it uses like three to four times more fuel. You know, if you had a pump that would normally pump enough power for a say 500 and something horsepower engine, you need like three times that pump to do it on methanol. Really awesome pump. It comes with its own pulse width modulated controller. We also got their vr series four port regulator so it has an inlet a return and four ports here it also can be boost referenced so you can have four different outlets that's really cool i just got a cheap 10 gallon fuel cell also got a battery box here that we're gonna have to mount so i've got to cut a hole in the floor for this sump for this tank to go through it's got like a bracket here too for probably the spare so i'm gonna probably go ahead and cut that you know, this needs to be gravity fed, obviously. Electric pumps always do. So we gotta find a place under the car to mount this thing. We'll mount this up under the hood. Well, I got the hole cut out in the floor for the fuel cell to go under the bottom for its sump. Got these straps made. I've been fighting with this bolt for like 30 minutes and I've just gave up on it for tonight. Got my battery box mounted, got my ground cable, got the positive cable run down through the floor, heading up that way. But guys, I'm just beat. It's been another 16 hour day out here for me. When you do build videos like this, you might work all day like this and get five or 10 minutes of video. It is very hard to make build videos and put them out quickly. But I'm gonna get up early in the morning and get back out here and get back to work on this. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, it's the next morning. I'm still very tired, and I was beat last night when I went in. Unusual day for me. Tosh had to go take a family member to the hospital this morning, so I took the kids to school, and I'm all alone. <laughs> it's usually not like this for me. Usually somebody's here. I guess I'm gonna dive right into this, get back on the plumbing stuff, see what I can get done. We now have six days until cleansing cars. Got a lot to do. I've been out here for several hours now. We have the fuel tank completely mounted now. Some of those stubborn bolts, I finally got them in. Mounted my gauges. I got the water temp hooked up. Only thing stopping me from hooking up the oil pressure one is I can't find the bag of fittings we had last night when we were working on it. So that's unfortunate. Here's what I come up with for a radiator hose. This is on a lower hose. I feel like it's on a Nissan front wheel drive vehicle. I saved it from work. And I found some hoses that were about the right size. So we'll clamp that in. I have no idea what this is off of, but there's the part number. So we got an upper and lower hose. It looks like it'll work. This is an aftermarket alternator mount for a Mopar alternator. I flipped it around backwards, bolted this way down here and swung it down low with this GM alternator it looks like it's gonna line up perfectly so that's a good deal also weld in a bed frame down here to hold our radiator in to keep it from moving i keep jumping around because i think about oh i need to do that i need to do this and i guess it all needs to be done i thought i was alone down here but ellie's been down here all morning she even goes upstairs with me when i go up to get stuff upstairs i think i'm going to put it on the lift now and start plumbing the fuel system this is probably not a good place to install the fuel pump although it would pump it into the engine update time so this is the feed and this is the return you want to return the fuel under the fuel level so you don't create a bunch of air bubbles so they're both dash 10 which is you know bigger than my thumb i've got a 100 micron pre-filter going into our pump here so they travel down through here 
and go up to the regulator. I'll show you up top. I also went ahead and put our battery cable in here. I think it's a two gauge up to the starter. I'm leaving all these loose until we get everything run because we'll probably have some wires and stuff that'll run through there and we'll zip tie it all up. I did put one legitimate clamp on there. Our feed line goes into here. Return comes out the bottom. The only thing I got left to do is the two lines going to the carburetor. So I got to make them. This is already pre-plumbed here, but I don't have one for this side because it was going to hit the linkage. So I got to make something there. To get that done, I'll have the whole fuel system plumbed. Today has not turned out like I thought it would at all. Usually me and Tosh are together all the time. Like I said, she had to take a family member to the hospital. And without getting into too much of it, it was worse than they thought. And they had to do a procedure while they were there. So I don't know when she's coming home, honestly. I may end up having to get the kids this evening and everything. I may be a single dad today. I'm going to keep hammering on this as long as I can. Maybe I'll hear back from her soon and see what's going on. But this last couple of weeks has been very hectic trying to get this thing done. Well, guys, I checked my rear end, went ahead and filled it up with fluid, took almost three quarts. I have never messed with gear oil where I didn't get it all over my arm. I got our transmission lines plumb with our Earl's line and fittings going up through here. And I got the transmission cooler up there. It's a and m It has 3 8 barb fittings on it, so I just clamped it to there. I'm a couple fittings short from being able to do the carburetor lines. I don't know how I missed ordering the correct thing, but I guess we'll see if this rear end leaks. I didn't replace any of the seals or anything, so we'll let it sit here and see if it starts dripping or not. It's like 100 degrees today. It's so hot, the gear oil was pouring out like water. It's so thin. I'm not much on the hot weather. I'd rather be cold than hot. I don't know how you guys are. I think I'm going to have to go down to the local speed shop and get the fittings I need to go from the carburetor to the regulator. I've got to do it today because I don't think they're open tomorrow. It is what it is. I'm going to try to figure out exactly what fittings I need and head off to get that. Tosh is on her way back, so her and the kids should be here when I get back. So let's get on the road and get the fittings and we can get this thing plumbed. I'm also going to try to get a belt this length right here. Believe it or not, I have like 100 belts upstairs and none of them are the right length. I got to get one of those as well. Check us out on other platforms at Sleeper Dude 88. You, sir, are a genius. What is that, a Ford Escort tail light assembly? Why hadn't I thought of that before? All right, let's see if we got what we need. Ooh, race car stuff. I love shops like this. Oh, they even got all this used stuff here. I just love this. It's mainly circle track stuff, but it's still so cool. Well, I ended up getting a whole bag full of fittings and some clamps to clamp our fuel lines up with. Even got this fancy switch panel here. I figured it would make my life a lot easier, especially on this build where speed is our friend on this build for sure. Trips to town just kill the day for me. It's not a short trip. I also got my fuel pump block off plate in the mail. I'm gonna go ahead and plumb these carburetors, get all that stuff put on. Everybody should be home soon. It's almost time for school to be out. He has been too scared to come down here all day. You must make him more brave or something. Did you miss me? I did. She don't know how to get around without me. I had to use my navigation. I think I got there around about like four times. Oh, wow. That's a record. <laughs> whoa, whoa. That's going in the intro. They, they just don't like you. My heart. All right, babies are home. It's 102 degrees. Rocky is panting. They're all hot. Uh, I bet. Fuel lines run, radiator mounted. Darn, son. Radiator hoses on and clamped. Dad got a lot done today. Something came in the mail today, too. None of y'all seen it. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> that's that hilarious. Great? Yeah. Love Isn't that it. cool? Love it. Little, little guy. That is incredible. <sighs> so it looked just like the movie car. Pretty cool. But just like it. What's well, just car show people now? Um, this is 100% car right, show right we here. We just see one of those crying babies. <laughs> I think I might confine one in the closet. <laughs> if we had a crying no. baby on the bumper, we would be car show people. Oh. You know that battery cable we found? Yeah. Didn't even have to cut the end off of it. Stop it was exactly it. the Stop right it. length. Didn't yeah. cut anything. Are you feeling any better about No, I'm not feeling any better, no. Like, you can get all this done and it's still, like, not run or not work. That's you know right. me. I'm the constant pessimist, I guess. Negative Nancy. Negative Nancy. Ralphie here, he's always thinking that everything's fine, we're good. But me, I'm always thinking it ain't going to work out. Ooh. Ooh. Nancy. I thought that would speed up the process a lot. 
Yeah. Of what? I thought you didn't even have that much to wire in. Well, there's not that much, but you got fuel pump, fan, <laughs> start the <laughs> engine, <laughs> ignition switch. You just you like them buttons. Them. Okay. You like them buttons. I do, I do. But well, it already comes pre-wired. I think I'm going to put the shifter in real quick before I start. Are we going to pull all night or nice Friday night? Woo! You're so extra. I'm always just... on something else today. Are you Okay, that's good. Yee, is hot. So here's our cool. So it's an MSD Blaster HVC. The reason we went with this cool is it's designed for high RPM use. It should work out perfect for this. I'm going to mount it right here so it's close to our MSD box wiring. I like that it has a tower style connector. All right, I'm going to drill this hole with small. If the drill bit goes through your finger, tell me. Oh, he's scaring so bad. Oh, he's so bad. He's terrible. Ralphie's not feeling so good today again, so. He's in the air conditioning here. So that's got a rubber mount to it. Same thing with ignition bolts we're about to install. That way, with all the vibration this thing's gonna have, maybe that'll absorb some of that. How's escape today? They're so yeah. little, they just crawl right on the fence. So we got three things to mount here. This is the controller for the fuel pump. We have our high current solid state MSD relay and we have our MSD box. So this thing can handle 35 amps each and four channels and it can be turned on by ground or positive. If you saw us wire the Fairmont, that's how it's wired. I really like those. I think I'm going to mount it something like this right here. This is our unlawful litter sign that we had in the Falcon for a rear floor pan at one point before I replaced the floors. Well, I went straight through to China, didn't I? So the fuel pump is super easy. All you have is a power and a ground. This power wire needs to be switched through a relay. Now the yellow wire here, if you send the ground to it like on a toggle switch or hook it up permanently to the ground, it runs the pump at half speed, which I probably will do since it's a really big pump. There's no reason to run it more than it has to. On the MSD box, heavy power, heavy ground as its power source is when it has a red switch power source. The blue wire is our two step. So like if we hit a button and floor it, it can have a preset launch RPM. And then the gray wire goes to attack, which we may or may not even have time to hook up attack, but it's pretty basic. I got to figure out about electric fan and it'll go through the high current relay, but I guess let's get started cutting wires. Mom always gets nervous when it was. Yeah. Starts. This count girl says, measure twice, cut one. He would say that, wouldn't he? So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know we're going to use our solder stick connectors. If you go to solderstick.com and use code JOSH20, you'll get 20% off. They make ring connectors. They make their low temperature solder buck connectors that are really neat. They also make spade connectors and heat shrink, a little bit of everything. Their ring connectors are all heat shrink as well, so it makes for a really nice setup. They're able to be used in marine applications and everything, so go check them out at solderstick.com. We're going to have to lengthen the wires from the MSD box because they've got to go straight to the battery. Look, they got the AC blowing over there in the RV. It's hot. Mom's sitting in the window just soaking it in. Hot. It is very hot. It's no, getting serious in here. Mom's patching the floor. She's been through about 100 screws already. <laughs> AC is I'm trying to wire in our switch panel here. Unfortunately, you have to take it all apart to wire it because the only screw you can get to on these switches is the first one. The rest of them are all blocked. Mine's gonna do a little body work here. You like this body hammer? <laughs> you can call me flower if you want to. What's that belly? Well, at least you must've mowed the whole yard. Well, you gotta have room for future improvements, you know. I finished my painting. It took me a while. Took you a while on this one? Okay. It's a little barn. I love the barn. Very good. You're getting good at these. We're actually crimping a battery cable correctly. The only weird thing is they have numbers, but it's not. It must be like some sort of metric deal because it doesn't line up with anything. Hopefully, we're crimping it with the right size. <clears throat> This is our charging wire from our alternator to our battery cable. That feels pretty good, huh? Give it the test. Not that much, not that much, okay? I'll zippy tied all this stuff up. 
a little better than what it was. This is the starter wire, which comes off the push button to the solenoid on the starter. Then we have the alternator charging cable that joins together with the battery cable on the starter lug. And it comes up here to the alternator and charges everything. This is our big heavy gauge fan wire for our electric fan that we don't know where we're gonna get it from yet. So I can't wire it in totally. Yeah. This is Ralphie, I don't know what he's doing. It's been a few hours of wiring here. It's been a lot, you've been good though. The way the switch panel works is it has a main power supply wire, which is this red, heavy red one here. It goes and sends power out to this aluminum bar here. I had one wire that has to be a ground switch. So I just moved the bar over and let it hang over that way. So this is actually a switch ground because this is what changes the pump from 50% power to 100% power. We still have one option here if we want to add something, but this is our two step, which should probably be on a push button, but we didn't have one right here. This is our engine fan. This is our fuel pump on msd box on and this is our starter button it gets main power to the solid state relay from two 10 gauge wires because we didn't have a battery cable long enough so i just hooked two 10 gauge wires together that's enough for 60 amps so probably should run this car these little small wires here are trigger wires so it's a really low amperage switch here all the high amperage goes between this and this so there's no high amperage in any of these switches over here the msd 6al2 here so this is a digital box and it comes with a little screwdriver like a little msd screwdriver you can change your rev limiter or your two-step rev limiter on the fly right here in these holes so that's how everything works guys so throttle shifter belt we gotta do all those things well, he must be feeling better he's vacuuming <laughs> trying to fan out I got this little Mr. Gasket throttle bracket on the, you know, performance aisle of the parts store. It's set up for like a throttle and a kick down for a GM car. And me and Ralph are thinking if we get it right about there, it'll work because our factory throttle cable is a square like that. I think we're going to add about four inches to the back of it and then L it over to this and bolt it to that. And it looks like that little L right there will work. So we need it far enough back that it'll pull it wide open. But if we go too far, it's gonna start cracking the throttle right about there, Ralphie. Mark a line right there. Right there? Yeah, mark a line on that. Yeah, that's good, bud. Good job. Yeah, huh. I hope we got that in the right place, Ralphie. Totally. You think so? Yeah. Well, this really doesn't fit that great. About broke the end <laughs> trying to snap it in there. I guess get in there and give it a kick and we'll see if it works. Hell, hell, hell. Him, 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 him. What's him, him, him mean? <laughs> Be easy on it now. <laughs> How far back will it go? Hold it all the way wide open. Is that wide open there? Okay, it broke already. I was worried about that. See, for some reason, the ball on this end is apparently not the same size as the ball on this. I did buy this while I was in the parts store. We may have to use that. Well, the throttle was working. It did it once. Yeah. Did it feel hard when you pushed it? It's not terribly hard, but like, like you could do it. Yeah. You don't gotta go. Okay, it's good like, to know. It's like average. Discount Daryl shows up. He told me it's coming right after work. It's nine o'clock at night. Here he is. I thought we were getting investigated by the FBI. <laughs> Isn't it your bedtime, Coco Melon? No. Huh? You gonna help get the car done? Yes. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna fix the car. You gonna fix the car? Yeah. You work on a lot of cars? Yeah. <laughs> I work with Papa's car. Work on Papa's car? I work in that car. Okay, good. Can you fix that one? No, it's still broke. Most of my stuff's broke down. What? Just like Papa's. <laughs> that one broke down? Yeah, it broke down, yeah. Somebody else broke it down. I'm trying to fix it. That car broke it down? <laughs> yes. Papa needs to fix it, and Josh needs to fix it. <laughs> and now it's broken. Yeah. Bye. It's the car. It's the car. <laughs> yeah, that should be perfect because I need to be able to reach everything from right here. Okay. We're putting Dad in charge of the transmission and shifter install. So if anything goes wrong with the transmission, it's all his fault. We guarantee our work. So after me and Ralphie professionally made all this bracket here, turns out the new cable, all this stuff here is longer. So it's got to move back about an inch. So I've got to cut this off and re-weld it back on. Hmm. 
I'm scared to push it now. Gas it. Does it feel okay? Yeah. It's wide open, isn't it? It looks like a four row open. You look like you're nervous about pushing it. I'm nervous as a cat, yes. Can't even see it's so tall up here. I'm yeah. just afraid it's going to break. It's all it's going to break. It's so wide open. Oh, gosh. Well, Josh, you got to fix that. It's got to return from there, so I didn't hook the second. I guess it needs that second return spring, huh? You might want to hook a third one up. Push on it slowly. Okay, keep going, keep going. Yeah, that's maxed out. All right, let off slowly. The only problem I see is right here. Watch right here. See that? Mm -hmm. It hits itself. All right, back off. We really don't want that. I'm just whomping a little bit, bending it back over. Whomping on it? Is that whomping what it was? It. Whomping over. So I'm making my final hose here. This is actually the vent for the gas tank. I figured I would show you how I've been doing them since I didn't video it. So I got my boss jaws here and we put some oil on this. Just get it on there and just push it home. It's just kind of a pain. But once you get it on there, it's See good. See on there. Is it tight? Yeah. Here, pull it out of there. <laughs> Impossible. What did you do at school today? I... That you got in trouble for? I got glued. You glued? Yeah. You'll be better next time, won't you? Yeah. Yeah, next time. You got any songs to sing? Yeah. Let's hear it. For the Bible season, winter, 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 winter. Good job! Yay! Okay. Go to the back left. Next to you, the closest one. Yeah. Okay, I'm there. Oh, check this out. We're getting fancy. This little tag got sent to us in the fan mail a while back. And the guy bought it and never installed it. So it's a little Sun Pro Super Tack 2. You had a Sun Pro Tack on your 63 Impala when I was a kid. I'm going to wire this thing in so we'll have a tack. I probably won't get a chance to look at it, but we'll have it. Bye, Coco Melon. Bye. 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 Well, it's like, I don't know, 11 at night. Everybody's left but me and Tosh. <laughs> uh, this is as much of all-nighters it's gonna get in it. Very late night for us. I really enjoy sitting down the evening and, you know, watching a movie or something, and that has not happened in the last couple of days. Well, this is the list of stuff that we still have to do. I thought it was gonna work for food. <laughs> we may be eating a sign for food <laughs> at the end of this. This has not been a cheap endeavor. I find no point in writing a list at the beginning because Everything has to be done. The fact that we're getting down to having a list now is good. I see that we need casings. We're going to a burnout competition in less than a week and we need got casings for it. I wish we had nice looking hoops for it, but I don't know. You have to have steelies on the back. That's so we may end up running these. We got a lot done tonight. I basically got the entire car pond and wire. I didn't think about it that way. Yeah, you did good. We will see you guys tomorrow and get back on this. We're back next morning. We're all sleepy. I just realized this morning something about this car that I had not even noticed. Where's the radiator cap? What? What? There's no radiator cap. I ordered a radiator that has no cap. Is it on the side? No. That's what that barb right there is for. It's made to have a external reservoir. Luckily, I had this, which happens to be like the same size barb. It has a cap that seals up under pressure. So hopefully that'll work. It may actually be a good thing because if your radiator cap is not the highest point in your system, you'll have an air pocket. So if the radiator cap was here, this would have air in it. We'll mount that reservoir somewhere up higher than that and to try to get the air out. That's fake news. I guess let's get started on our list. We have five days until the event. I can't believe I ordered a radiator with no cap. What are you working on, Ma? I'm putting some pantyhose over these. Uh, what are you doing that for? I'm doing this so junk doesn't get in the car when we're, when Dad's ripping the chip out there. Ripping the chip? Yes. What are you doing? I, don't know. I need to see some of that chrome. Ralphie's patching up the holes in the firewall so we have no way for fire to get through the wall. There you go. Perfect. You just put one in every corner. You should be good. One in every corner? Yes, sir. Stop. 
So I'm using the Earl Superstock hose here again, just using it with clamps instead of the fittings. What we'll probably do is take the filler neck off and fill it up mainly through there and just top it off here. Cause this gives us the highest point. They probably make something that's designed right for it that slips over the top. I probably should look into that, but probably we don't really should. have time for it to get here. We can get it for you, be about two weeks. What happens, please? I was in some rug and I shot myself with water. Right in the face? Yeah. That's amazing. Classic. <laughs> Let's see if this fan works, Weasel. Yep. Oh, that's nice. I think that'll work, don't you? Yeah. That is out of a Kia Rio. Our original plan was just to cover the top and you still see the metal here, but, but there wasn't really a great way to do that. So I guess it's just gonna be all black. Hopefully that doesn't like catch fire. This should work out really nice. It's almost the exact same size as the core. We'll just zippy tie that thing in, won't we? Yeah. I really don't have enough experience with methanol. Well, I have no experience with methanol to know how much cooling it needs. I mean, this is a three core frostbite radiator, which is good. You know, I could probably put a bigger fan on it, but with the methanol, I don't know how much it needs really. You go in between the cores. So you have to go in the fin part. Doesn't that seem scary to punch a hole through the middle of a radiator? Yep, it really does. Yeah, it's kind of scary. Basically a zip tie. I'm gonna drill some holes we can run some zip ties through this. That is impeccable. Well, you just hook two together and you got a mount. That's all you really need, isn't it? Totally. It's pretty true. I'm putting the cover on the shifter. I got the fan wired in, so it should be good. Ground it over to the frame over there, and then it gets its power signal from the MSD solid state relay. Obviously, fans mounted-ish. I probably need to put one more zip tie over here, shouldn't I? No. That's the only corner I didn't strap down. We're gonna have to go to the parts store to get a belt and the heater hose loop deal. I hope they make something that'll loop that together. Oh, you got the shifter all hooked in? Man, daddy is gonna be mad at you. He was working on that. We're gonna have to put it up on the lift and do the bottom side at some point. I guess we could try some of the electrical system. We haven't tried it yet. Mom had to go to the hospital again today to go pick up her family member from the hospital. They're getting out today, so all's good there. All right, let's hook it up for the first time here. Oh, sizzle. They're all off, except that all... Yeah, it's on. Okay. Mm. This should turn the ignition on. I saw the box turn on. What does that say? Fuel pump? I don't want to turn that on because there's no fuel in it. I don't want to. Yeah, probably just air Alright, let's try the fan. Yeah. Fan works. What's that one I say? I felt that from here. What does that Tissed say? Oh, uh, we won't know about that one. Why does that lit up all the time? It has a switch ground. Why is it? That light should not be on all the time like that. Oh, I wired that up wrong. I wired one thing up wrong there. It looks like everything else is working. Let's bump the starter. Mm. Okay. Well, I just wired that line up backwards is the only thing it's showing up right now. Okay, good deal. That's a good sign. I want to start it so bad. We'll get there, we'll get there. It's like the get, urge. I think we can get it done in five days. The big thing we're waiting on about starting it is we have no transmission dipstick. Mm -hmm. We can't start it with, not, with a fluid drive and we can't fill it up with a dipstick. The transmission dipstick is not supposed to be here until two days from now. So we can't computer. start it for two days is what yeah. you're telling me. Unless we can make this factory dipstick work somehow. Why don't we have the old dipstick? Hey, I, I think I know where it's at. Go get it. Where? In the, the bucket of parts for the motorhome, there should be an engine dipstick. We can go ahead and put that in. So basically what I did here, the ground wire to the lights on the ground coming in instead of the ground going out. So that should work now. Got it? Yeah. Should turn on when I do this. Oh yeah. Yes. There we go. This is a hundred percent fuel. This is fifty percent fuel. We could just bump the fuel pump, couldn't we? Could just bump it, right? Here, let me listen. Ready? I mean, I don't know if it'll make sound. Oh yeah. Oh, she's working. Okay. We got it all figured out then. I didn't even look at our volt gauge. Bam. We're trying to knock this little detailed stuff out. Ralphie found our dipstick for this thing. I'm gonna goop it up with a little RTV before we put it in there. That is obnoxiously tall, just like the intake. We got a tunnel rim dipstick on this thing. I probably will put one extra cord in it though, just in case. What do you think? Maybe two. No. <laughs> so we do have the factory dipstick tube off of the Durango. The firewall on this is so much closer. 
we're gonna have to have a flexible one. When I went to the circle track store, they had a bunch of dipsticks there, but they were all for like turbo 400s and power glides and stuff, so. Hey, we can put the, we can get the, um, Give it a bendy bend? Yeah, bendy bend. I mean, when you look at where it is down there, it comes up and like this goes right into the firewall all through here. Are you sure that we cannot bend it? I can't even get it down there. I think we can do a bendy bend. <laughs> we may have to if it gets comes to it. So what's stopping us from making it run? Oh, Dip stick? Dip stick, for sure. The belt is. I mean, we could start her up no. and then shut her off. <laughs> we got to prime the oil system. Honey, uh, that one. Part store, part store. Hey, well, if it really did yet. come down to it, we could get that thing a bendy bend. Well, let's put it up in the air and see what it looks like. Maybe we can make something work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 ma'am, ma'am. Ralphie, it's hitting the firewall right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if we gave it a bendy bend? Hammer the firewall back. Something there and smash that firewall back. Yeah, how many times can we do that? We can't wait, can't wait that long, can we? No, we, we can't, can't wait, wait two days. We can't wait two days. Her squeeze already slinked out. I believe so, I haven't seen her. I may be able to shove this thing in here. I think I may be able to get this in here. Maybe. Oh, this is a big pry bar situation here. It's so far up in there. Coco Mel, what are you doing? You working on the car? No. Dad brought his lunch, look at that, it's serious. Can you bring me nut? I almost feel like it's hitting something. You. I don't understand that. It should. It should go right down there. There. Bending that over towards the We were able to get the Durango dipstick in here, even though it's almost the tallest thing on the engine. We have the tunnel ram dipsticks front and back. All right, well, let's get the shifter figured out. Dad's gooping up some RTV around the dipstick tube so it don't leak. Test out the shifter to make sure it's adjusted right. That's a reverse, neutral, drive, second, first. Pull it back all the way to park, Ralphie. Yeah, it's good, it's in park. Okay, we should be adjusted right now. The big deal is now our throttle pressure deal. So I think I'm just gonna pin this thing back as if the car was wide open throttle. Now that wouldn't work in a car that you're gonna street drive because it wouldn't shift until probably like five grand or something. But for this, it should be fine because I don't even wanna think about trying to hook up another cable. So as we pull the zip tie, our pressure on the throttle deal increases. See, dad's the one that really talked me into that. I would never have done that that way. Well, basically, I try to do stuff right. What you're doing, I guess. That's the Dad, best. though, he just throws stuff together. No, I don't. I measure twice and cut once always. <laughs> what? What's wrong? I'm just lowering the lift down, guys. Yeah, that's good now. We gotta go to the store. I can't find my heat wrap stuff anywhere. So I need to do a firewall in the back and I need to get the back window in it, but that ain't stopping us from driving it. No. We gotta wait for the RTV to drive before we can put transmission fluid in it. So we're gonna have to. Mom called us and said she was in town, come meet her. So dad's gonna work on casing things. We're probably gonna take the front runners off the Fairmont and put on this car for now. But we're gonna go meet up with mom, get the parts we need from town. There she is. It's so fancy. That's one way to get her done. He's set up oh a tent city gosh. here working on that thing. Oh, he's got another one over he's here. He's got his floor jack and everything. Get her oh. done. She's got her list, fellas. <laughs> We're going to get this figured out. Well, we got some options on our belt. Oh. I've literally got a hundred belts and none of them fit it. So, yeah, uh, exactly. I tried them too. <laughs> They didn't have anything to loop our heater hoses, so we're just gonna have to we put a hose on it and put a plug in or something. All right, let's get back to it. Well, that looks pretty good on there, doesn't it? So these were on the Fairmont, and obviously the Fairmont's not running currently. So we're gonna throw them on there so it looks a little bit better. Ralph, you might could polish them up. Dad had to put some tubes in them because they will not stay aired up. The hoops actually leak, apparently. Were they hard to get tubes in? Oh. Okay, cool. We got the 10 inch ones for the back, but I can't run them because I you can't run aluminum hoops. Yeah, I like how it looks a lot better though. It makes it look more mainer. So this one is two inches longer than the one we tried the first time. 
That's so close. Hand me the 43 inch one. We got another one that's one inch bigger than that. That's gonna be it right there. So if you've got a Mopar alternator bracket, flip backwards with a GM alternator on it, you need a 43 inch belt. All right, got it, Ralph? Yeah. It really probably needs another brace off of this back side of the bolt, but it'd be fine, right? I mean, it's not like we've ever thrown a belt before in the middle of a burnout and cooked the motor. Why is it green? I don't know. I was Anybody know that. why the belt's green? It looks like a lawnmower belt or something. It ought to be green because of how much money it cost me. <laughs> I bought some of this heat wrap stuff at the parts store. I figured that your methanol lines probably shouldn't be getting cooked by your header, should they? Probably not. I'm big green. Are you sure you can hold this? Yes, I can. It's a funnel. Don't put it in the black tubes. <laughs> How dare you? I want to be surprised. Looks like you was going to, didn't it, Ralphie? Yes. What in the Meg's County you got going here? Well, the parts store did not have any way to loop this. I've seen those like pre-made loop deals, but they're always five eighths to three quarter, and this is one inch. You know, they just don't take care of the Mopar guys. So I found this one inch hose, which I have no idea what we used it for before. Put some pop plugs in the end of them, screwed them down. Hope for the go. best. Exactly. Ralphie's filling up our cooling system now. I've actually took the upper radiator hose off so we can pour it into the engine if we have to. We're getting close, guys. We're getting real close. I'm really excited. I need you to bump the starter. We're gonna try to get back on top dead center number one. More. More than that. More. More. All right, there you go. Whew, that thing pops your finger off there. We're used to that low compression stuff, huh? Yeah, it was hot on my finger. I'll the <laughs> it's just funny that we even got this far to make. Negative Nancy over here. We gotta get the grill in it when we get done. I was barely able to fit this in here. So we got our little oil pump priming shaft that we got from Mopar. Let's see what it does. Oh, we're at 40, 60, like 70. Wow. You're super close to 80. It's pretty good, ain't Ralph? Yeah. Everything good? Yeah. All right, let's drop the distributor down in place. Woo! So this is the shaft that connects the distributor to the oil pump. Basically, as the cam turns, it turns the distributor and the oil pump. We put that brass gear on it in the last video because this has a billet camshaft in it. Right there, right there. There we go. Honestly, I probably should be running a locked out aftermarket distributor, but I don't have one of those. So this is a factory Mopar electronic pickup distributor, which will work with our MSD. Should I search up how the plug wires go on the cat or whatever it is? I already know it. Oh, how? Do you like 1843-6572, son. Got it tattooed on my lower back. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> I don't know whose idea it was to get these obnoxious headers. <laughs> Masterpiece. Whoop. <laughs> this masterpiece. What is the plan here, buddy? Like wrap, wrap, oh my wrap it around here, here and there, and then yeah, like that. Let's we'll save this for another time. Bullet, bullet. It's only two pickup wires coming out of the MSD. Green goes to black, and then purple goes to the orange. That's how you hook up your factory Mopar distributor to your MSD. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. I guess the time has come, guys. Thank you, Lord. He's took a knee. Sing the national anthem. <laughs> well, so this is five gallons of methanol. I got some top lube here. This is strawberry, so it what? makes it smell what? like strawberry. That what? Is a peck of one. Yeah. Strawberries. 1.6 ounces is what Ralphie says we need to put in I'm it. Big brain. It was kind of thick, isn't it? It's thicker than I thought it'd be. It's like Earl. There we go. Just maybe a little too much. Just drip it off the side. Alcohol naturally just does not have very good lubricating properties. It dries stuff out, right? It does. So this is supposed to help with, you know, your rings, uh, your pump, stuff like that to give it a little bit of lubrication. Alcohol's kind of harsh on stuff. Oh. Well, this will be the first time I've ever put methanol in any car I've ever owned. We putting all five gallons in? Yeah. No leak so far? No. Throw it to it. The fuel is clear. Oh, you're doing that long pour. Oh yeah, that Ralphie long pour. I'm gonna check our fuel pressure before we try to start anything. Make sure our car bears aren't doing anything weird. Turn the one on that says fuel. It's working on it. I see it going up. I hear it. I hear the lines getting. 
Is there any pressure on the gauge yet? No. Okay, shut the pump off. We're gonna give it like three PSI. All right, you can turn it off. That's incredible. This pump can pump 130 PSI fuel pressure. And that regulator is good enough that it can bypass so much, it can get it down to zero if it wants to. That's crazy. Oh, that hurts so bad. We'll try it like this and see how it does. Ignition on. <laughs> okay, hit the starter there, Ralphie. That was quick. Ready? Yeah. It fired right off, didn't it? I probably need to give it some fuel, honestly. Why was it like blowing stuff out of the headers? That's how it is, bud. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! You should have seen her face. Try it again, Ralphie. Thank you, Lord. That's crazy. Let me put a timing line on it so I have that. I forgot about that. That's crazy. Huh? It's so loud. Did you have your earplugs in? Yeah. It's yeah. loud. Like, I can hear it super loud, even with the earplugs. <laughs> they have good oil pressure. That's a good sign. Yeah. They gon' know. They gon' know. <laughs> she ain't kidding. No. It's still smoking.
Yeah. We are going to be like, no, nah, that's crazy. Hey. We've never had one like this. We, we have stepped our game up. Is, are, are we in the competition now? Oh, yeah. We I hope so. I mean, we ain't got a burnout yeah. in it yet, but. I that got a piece. It's fun both. That's good. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Squeeze! Did you hear it? <laughs> she couldn't understand me when I was like right by her. I know, right? It's so loud. Hey, I'm so excited. I'm ready to go Bristol now, baby. Bristol, baby. Woo! Usually when you start up a new engine like that, it overheats because it's breaking everything in. Right. It sat there and ran and never got past 130 yeah, degrees. It never did. Wow. But it had like 60 pounds of oil pressure, 70 pounds of oil pressure. I got to get the idle down. It's idling too high because it's got, you know, eight throttle blades. I think it's a little fat too because it's wanting to load up on fuel a little bit. Do you feel better now, Dad? I feel a lot better now. Transmission works. Engine works. Brakes work. Brakes work. Never had a doubt. I think we're dripping a little bit of transmission fluid. Wow. That's too cool. It's yeah. so awesome. Uh, this is probably my new favorite now. Definitely new favorite. She's a ripper. Sounds awesome. Once we get past these next couple burnout competitions, I would love to know what it runs Oh, we'll track. take her to a drag strip. You gonna let her rip in the front yard or not? I need to get it tuned in a little better. I need to work on the car just a little bit, but. Now I just barely tap in the throttle. Hey, she's ready. She ready to roll. I thought it would burn her eyes worse. It's really not. Man, that is such a good feeling. Yes. It runs, it has oil pressure. It's not making any weird sounds that I can hear. But we have never built a car from nothing to this level. But we built this car from a bone stock empty shell to this in how many days? What's the total number? It's been like two weeks, right? Yeah. All together. Including the body work. I feel a lot better now. I would love to have some seat time. We're showing up to the biggest burnout event in the country with no seat time at all. But where do you practice burnouts? Yeah, I, mean, I know. Now we might can rip it up the driveway a time or two. Yeah, we might do that. See if you can slide around in the driveway. I cannot believe. It sounds so cool. I cannot believe. It's so responsive too. It, is very it, does, responsive. it doesn't seem too loud until she you was to ready. Talk to she was ready the whole time. I can't believe we got run today. Why is it wet like that there? That's condensation. Feel it. The intake's cold, not hot. Oh, wow. But the exhaust what? will be hot, right? The exhaust will be hot. It keeps the engine cool if it's hot. Our bowl levels look good. Well, while it's cooling off here, Ralphie's going to try to put the grill and headlight buckets and stuff in it because we never did put that on. We really need to put a front bumper on it. I had to take Wawa's glorious work with the pantyhose and the velocity stacks off because we got to reach down through here and turn down the air bleed because that's how you set the idle airspeed on these. You can adjust these, but they tell you to try this first. Mom is working on polishing her hoops out. It's probably been a minute since they've been polished. Now we got a little bit of protection. We tucked the bumper in because we have no front bumper brackets. The car didn't come with any. I turned them in like one turn each and that blocks off how much air it gets. I want to check my total timing, which is you have mechanical advance. So as your RPM increases, it swings out and gives it more timing. So I need to rev it pretty hard and watch the timing. I keep getting told that methanol uses less timing than gasoline. If this engine wanted 36 degrees normally, we'll probably back it down to like 30 or 32. So I'm wanting to see a number around 30, 32 when it's held pretty high RPM. We're gonna crank it up again. We'll recheck some fluids and stuff. See how she does. Crank it.
better there, wasn't it? That's real deal Hollyfield right there. It sounds like a yeah. race car. It, what do you mean it sounds like a race car? It hey, is a race car. Hey, you, feel, you sound like a race car. It means you feel it in your bones. You pegged the RPM gauge to 8,000. That's not set right then. It makes your right foot start tingling wanting to gas it. <laughs> I turned the idle air bleeds down all the way as far as they would go. And it was still idling just barely high. I went like a half a turn out on the idle speed screw and it like didn't like that. It, so I went back to where it was. So that's about as low as I can get it to idle. Did you burn like, your arm? It did, it burnt my elbow, yes. It idles at like 50. 50 pounds of oil pressure? Well, let's go with it now. Our timing when it's sitting here idling is about 15 degrees. And when I hang it wide open, it's right at 30, 32. So I think that should be good on that. Okay, he's so ready. He's so yeah, ready. you can put him back on, <laughs> sure buddy. It's only at 110 degrees. I'm putting a little bit of Loctite on this bolt because last thing I want is for that thing to fall down in my engine. Reinstalling these. It kind of looks cool all blacked out, I guess. Yeah, it does. We need to get something though that's made for that. All right, you guys ready to rip it? Yeah. She still run? What did I do wrong? Is the voltage just low, you think? Maybe. I think we're having methanol problems. I think it's just not wanting to start on the fuel, so I'm gonna spray some brake cleaner down it. Ignition on, fire. <laughs> it was super fun. We never unhooked the battery charger. I know. I, t I seen it after we backed out and I was like, stop, stop, stop. And then it's like, too late. <laughs> hey, 
It's 130 degrees. Awesome. Had good oil pressure for the whole thing. It seems like it's a little picky on startup, but that's probably just me not knowing what I'm doing. I wonder if Mike heard that. Uh, I'll bet everybody in the county heard that. We better close the doors down. Right <laughs> Act like it wasn't us. <laughs> it went straight up to high gear. Everything felt good? Yeah. Don't wow. touch that exhaust. That. You need to feel it, Josh. Don't touch oh, the exhaust, Bubba. You expect it to be hot, right? It's so cold. Wow. That's crazy. Them old casings ain't bent that fast in a long time. Yeah, they're definitely Maypops. Hey, we got rubber on the quarters already. It'll amaze me if Mike don't come down here. Hey. Oh, there he is right there. He got clothes on. He ain't got nothing He's on. He's naked right out the pool. <laughs> <laughs> It's a ripper. I said, listen, listen. She's like, what? Look at Josh, he's got his car burning. Oh, crazy. <laughs> Up a little bit. Feel how cold it is. Oh, wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? And that's because of that. Alcohol, wood. yeah. What did you put on top of it? Pantyhose. We got them from your house. Oh, they were mine. <laughs> I was wondering where they were. <laughs> <laughs> that is wicked. It is so rowdy. It may just not have quite big enough battery, you know? It, it's telling me it's cranking kind of slow. So you heard it all the way down the street. Yeah, I was in the pool and I'm, we're swimming around and Allie, Allie and everybody and I'm like, listen. She's like, what? I go, hear that? She's like, what is that? I go, that's Josh. There's no burn on it, guarantee it. <laughs> it's not flooding or nothing. I turned off. I thought it might be pushing past that the sink. Yeah, we have been thrashing on this thing to get it done. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ripped the ends off over, didn't he? Yeah. This looks fun. She been skidding up. You must have got it running because I saw a big black mark. Yes, we did. Here's how to come in to start back up again. Check the timing, it starts right up. So I don't know. Did you check the timing? By the time it flashed, the thing started up. So I didn't see it. We'll figure it out. Like those roasters and roasters. You always see them over there. Yeah, they'll pour something in it. We may have to do something like that. What's crazy to me is that this is what came out of that. The fact that that's the same engine that used to be in that thing. That is crazy. I mean, I got to make that enclosure around the, the fuel cell, but is that all? Is that the only thing? Put the back glass in? Back glass. Back, yeah. back glass. Exactly. Well, man, we have worked ourselves to death on this deal. I really can't believe we got to this point in the time we've worked on it. This is definitely a first for us, getting something that far. But we are going to take off this evening. It'll be nice to go in and, and be able to relax a little bit. We still got some details to finish up. But we will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to check the mail. Look how sideways I got. The marks are so close together. And look, we got, <laughs> we got some flipper out here <laughs> on this side. We're gonna get some better casings for the event. Yeah. Next day, we have four days now until the event. This thing was an empty hole sitting in our yard 13 days ago. So in 13 days, we did the brakes, the body and paint work, rebuilt the engine, transmission, and rear end, plumbed it, wired it, put it all back together and drove it. Yeah, it's basically. We made a hog look in 13 days, you mean? Yeah, come on. We're gonna do some maintenance stuff now and some tuning stuff. I just wanna make sure we need to change the oil before this event coming up. We also want to put some stickers on it for our YouTube channel and for our sponsorship. We got some valve cover breathers in the mail. We got to swap out the back casings for something else. All right, well, let's get to it, Ralphie. Woo!
Well, the strap looks like it's got some heat in it. You can see the timing mark. This line right here is the timing. So a lot of guys will keep adding timing until it gets to the bend in the strap. So it could probably take more timing. That doesn't mean it would make more power, but it could take more. The ring here tells you a lot about the heat. The fact that that looks brand new is telling me it's not getting hot in the cylinder at all. That's a good sign. I don't see anything wrong with that plug right there. Methanol looks totally different than gasoline plugs because gasoline plugs can look all black and sooty, as you know, but methanol plugs will just kind of get yellow from what I've seen. The main thing here we're trying to figure out is if they look even. We want to make sure we don't have a dead cylinder because it's kind of hard to tell. And we had fuel coming out of that back one on that side. I'm really wondering about it. They all look pretty evenly gray on the strap. I don't see anything here saying we have a misfire you can see the timing mark on it right there i don't see anything here that worries me at all your spark plug is your best way to tune really as far as you can rely on a lot of other things like you know if you have a wide band auction sensor or whatever but really the spark plug is the only thing that was there when it happened in the cylinder so it's really a good tuning thing especially if you're just starting out with a car look at the plug see what it looks like it'll tell you a whole lot we got the whole herd moving in on us now all the Rocky Juniors and Flower and Mabel. Well, we got all our plugs back in. I guess we're gonna fire it up and see if she'll start this morning. Well, I think we figured out why our tack doesn't work right. On the back, it has a little switch for four, six, and eight cylinder. We were on four. So that should read correctly now. Right up. I think it might be the extra battery. Being charged battery, up better? Yeah. Here's the test. See if it'll start right up now. Ignition on. Put it out. Did you try the fuel pump on that time? No. <laughs> we gotta have fuel. It's fixed. It'll never do that again. <laughs> It has 14 volts on the gauge. Okay. I don't know what it is, guys. Seems to be starting up today, though. I guess we'll just hope for the best. We got other things to worry about. Let's change the oil, I guess. What? You didn't start it? I didn't hear it. You didn't hear it run? No. Yeah. Why? I thought it was thunder, and I bet that's what it was. Oh, you heard. Well, heard and the thunder roll. Thunder. Down, down, down. See what our oil looks like here. Ooh, it's milky. What? See how milky that is? Look at Ew, that. Is that? Looks like baby straw. Smell it. Smells like alcohol. Is that bad? I think it's just part of an alcohol car. This is why you change oil with them pretty often. That may be excessive. I have no experience, so I don't know. Anytime you're breaking in a new engine, you're going to have metal that goes through the filter. I just want to change it before we go to Bristol with this thing. We probably won't run it until we just like load it up. He's worried about it now. I am worried, yes. I'm not seeing metal flakes, are you? Not really, no. It just looks like it has a bunch of alcohol in the oil. I see that sweat drop. Do <laughs> you shaking up the paint again? Me and Ralph are gonna go on a quest now to get some hoops that are the right size. This one is showing the belts on the inside. That one over there might work, but it's got a different hoop, so I don't really like it. It's got holes all in it, so we're gonna go up to the other shop and look for some hoops. I guess Wreck-It Ralph's gonna drive us up there. I'll pull this car up. I have seen you wreck at least twice in the yard. Did you though? <laughs> Watch for traffic. Back up, Terry. When I was your age, we didn't have backup cameras. Well, there you are. You ain't got any five on four and a half, do you? Look, mom bought a goat the other day, of course. She always needs a new goat. That's off the Lincoln, so I know that's too big of a pattern. That would fit, but that casing ain't really that great. I know these would fit, but they're aluminum. We can't use them. So that's the right low pattern, but they're junk. <laughs> we appreciate your help, Rocky. Thanks for helping us find all those. So the only two real prospects we have for the rear are these right here. One of them's a 15 and one of them's a 14, and they got a bunch of tread. What is this, a gender reveal? What's the level of your shoes? 
<laughs> okay, next day I'm gonna try and knock out this firewall around our gas tank and battery. I was just gonna wing it, but I think I'm gonna make a pattern out of cardboard now. We've only got three working days before we gotta leave, so we gotta get this done. Well, golly, look at that, man. Got that hammered out here in a few hours. So we got latches on here where we can put fuel in it. Same thing with the battery here. Hopefully that'll pass tech and keep us safe and everything from fire. I just got these hinges and latches at Lowe's. Everything else is just self-tap screws. It turned out pretty good, I think. Not too bad. I think that'll work just fine. I used the nibbler for that. It worked really good on all those curves. So I really like using it on the curve stuff. Man, it'd be nice to have a big metal shear and a big metal break though. Maybe one day we'll save our pennies up. We gotta get our stickers on and we Woo! gotta get our hoops painted. That's the best news I've heard. And I think we'll be ready. <laughs> oh, Ralphie's got some stickers he wants to put on it here. Without these guys' help, we wouldn't have been able to build this car. It's shaped like Tennessee. I think they're from Tennessee. How much horsepower does one sticker add? 20. 20? I've, see, I've heard that. I've heard that was the number. I wasn't sure Here though. I don't want to squeeze this sticker. Great job, Ralphie. Think of all the horsepower we're adding right here. There's no telling. 20, 40, 60, 80, right there. Yeah. Okay. Looking good. Lousy day. <laughs> I'm surprised that one hadn't popped on us already. Selling the neighbor's food over there. She looks like a darn dinosaur. We got all the casings we own that'll actually hold air. A lot of them in the category <laughs> that won't hold air. They really think you got something. Yeah, it's a measuring tape, ladies. That one may not even fit it. Y'all, what, what are we gonna do? Is that hitting the yeah. leaf spring? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She up on it. So only one of those will work. The one that was on it. We gotta do something different. Yep. Rocky, we still need some more small Ford pattern. You got any? That's a new goat. What's up, new goat? See got a name? I don't know. <laughs> Can't keep up. We got everything loaded up we can find down here. This may have to be our option here. What? The old wagon wheel. Are you kidding me? It's the only thing we got that has tread matches. Oh no. Where'd that come from? Uh, it was on the Galaxy at one point, but I don't know where we got it though. This one fits good. It looks puny. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> something don't look right. The front's bigger than the back. This is a mess. What is she doing? She's chewing her Granny. <laughs> what is she doing? Well, it's like she just... <laughs> the other wagon wheel here does not hold air. We're gonna try to slime it and see if that works. Oh, well, it's gonna make it just like new again. Right. You think that'll fix it? I don't hear leaking anymore. Not at all. Look at all that tread on that. Perfect setup, huh? Yeah. Well, let's paint it up and get on there and get done with this. We're gonna use our sweet patina get going. Yeah, get it gone. If you use code sleeper dead sweet patina, you're gonna get 5% off your order. Go check it out. We better not wash too much. We might not have much left. Yeah, we need something a little better than this for the next one. Well, at least this one ain't the biggest one of the year in front of everybody with no practice. I sprayed more paint in the last month than I have. In the last time. year? Yeah. Smells so good. Mm. I'm having a drag strip right now. I guess we're ready as we're ever going to be, right? We're ready. Oh, gosh. Good job, Walt. Guys, thanks for following along with this build. We really appreciate it. We have worked ourselves to death. We just have a couple days now until Cletus and Cars. We're just gonna load her up and go. I'm fine with me. We have to christen the floor at some point. Yeah, we need to put more sealer on it. Exactly. Guys, pour one out for your homies. Show a little respect. 
Drink your RC Colas. Eat your... Wayne. Exactly. We're going to load this thing up here in about two days and head off towards Bristol, Tennessee. We can't wait for it. I'm a little bit nervous going with an untested car, but we're going to do our best and hopefully we won't find any problems with it. I can't believe we got it done in time. Yeah. I really was not feeling that we were going to get it done. I knew I, it was I actually was going to say this. I had no reference point to know how many days does it take to build a car from scratch like this and do body paint, plumbing, wiring, rebuild engine, rebuild transmission, rebuild the rear end. Like, we got to get some different casings for the back. I'm not digging the wagon wheels there. You know, I feel like I'm on the Oregon Trail right now. Oh, I like the Oregon Trail. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got more events coming up this year. We're going to try to do with this car, too, as long as it survives Bristol. We appreciate everybody that watched our channel, everybody that likes and subscribes and comments. All that stuff really helps us. Thank you to all the members we have. They got to see pictures of the build as we were doing it, so we appreciate you guys. You can now buy our merchandise at thesleeperdo.com. We have several shirt designs. Stickers are free shipping. We do international. Thank you to everybody who's been buying shirts. They've been selling out quick. We really appreciate your help. You're just hungry tonight, huh? Did mommy not feed that baby? Bruce, I have some for Rocky. But you can check out our second channel app. Sleeper Dude 2. <laughs> you can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok app. Sleeper Dude 88. Man, all oh. we have is Wawa on that one. That was it. Well, we're going to learn how to tune some methanol engines, I guess, and figure out what it takes to make this happen. I'm sure there's a lot of secrets we don't know. Every now and then we get comments, people saying, oh, you're just doing the burnout stuff because of YouTube. Guys... If you knew how I was before I had a YouTube channel, you'd be eating your words on that one because I was always wanting to do a burnout competition. There wasn't any around here. When me and Tosh were in high school, she would come take pictures of me doing burnouts on back roads and stuff. So I've been doing this stuff my whole life ever since I could get a license. I used to take my dad's cars out and do burnouts while he was at work. And Discount Daryl will measure the tread, wouldn't he? Oh yeah. It's a good thing he doesn't watch the channel because he would find out right now about that. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get back from the motorhome build for sure. We gotta get the wagon fixed as well. We gotta get the Galaxy going. We gotta get brakes on the E100. We gotta get the LS motor in the Metro Mont. We gotta get some stuff done to Mom's MG. There's just the list goes the on. The vet. Oh, the vet. The beetle. We need to get the gauges working on the vet for sure, so where we can drive it. Yeah, I'm it. The V Dub. Paint it, yeah. Yep, we gotta get on that. So, and big thank you for the help from our sponsors. Holly, we really appreciate their help. They've been helping our channel out for a long time. Link in the description to them if you wanna buy anything. Using that link helps out our channel. Also, Comp Cam, we really appreciate their help. This thing is sounding pretty rowdy with that Comp mm -hmm. Cam in there. Part number's in the description of the video. We would not be able to do builds like this without their help because it is not a cheap endeavor to build a whole car like this in two weeks. <gasps> Wait! Oh, she locked in. Granny intercepted me. Here you go. You got green lips, Granny. We got to save some for your boyfriend. Look, her belly is dragging the ground. There you go, good. Mmm. She's so calm. That's a good peg. We should definitely take her to the house. I, I, I keep a on her. She'd pull you around like a rag doll. There you go, walkie. Mmm, that's good. Rocky Jr., you know he wants some. <laughs> Oh man, splitting it up. I definitely couldn't have got that drive shaft done without you. Rocky will go for it. Oh yeah. There you go. Wild Bill loves Mama and Ralphie. Ralphie's been feeding him early in the morning, late in the evening. Oh, he says Mama's got no milk today. <laughs> Vote on what the new goat's name should be. We need to know what her name should be. We haven't come up with one yet. Hogan Doss. Nutella. Nutella? That's uh, a pretty Nutella. good one. That might be a... Hi, yeah. Bye! Dad, I'm going to chase you down. Stuff. No, I, I don't know what to do. I'm going to chase you down. Dad, stop. I'm going to chase you down. No! You better say it. I'm going to chase you down. I'm going to chase you. I'm on you. I'm catching up. Don't hurt her. Uh, Bye!